The family. One day, your friends told you to take up yoga. You were convinced that yoga would help you with stress, but you joined Anne Hamilton Burns' yoga class. Instead of allowing you to release your inner tensions, she convinced you and everyone else in the class to join her quest to create a master race. Believing that she was the second coming of Jesus, when she could have actually just been Adolf Hitler reincarnated in a woman's body. Anne and her husband Bill became the leaders of a cult called The Family, based in Australia. They adopted and took custody of numerous children, often forcing single mothers into giving up their babies and using any other sketchy means to get their hands on kids. These kids were isolated from the rest of the world and were dressed the same to fit Anne's idea of a perfect child. Anne took it to another level when she subjected these children to cleansing experiments that made use of drugs like LSD and other hallucinogens. She wanted to break down their sense of reality and force them to adopt her visions and ideas. However, she failed to make the perfect race when authorities witnessed her actions in the 1980s. Her arrest ended her Nazi-like reign of terror over children and adults alike. Church of Euthanasia One of the possible reasons why you'd probably want to be part of a cult is to have a group of people embracing you as a member of a family because you probably feel alone and are losing the will to live. But the Church of Euthanasia actually does the opposite by telling you, nah bro, we think it's a good idea if you unalive yourself. So basically, the Church of Euthanasia isn't necessarily a cult, but is more of a satirical religion that had a popular slogan that says, save the planet, off yourself. Essentially, this group wanted everyone to kill themselves because it was the only way to restore balance to the planet, making it the only anti-human religion to ever exist in modern times. The Church of Euthanasia, of course, conducted its own unethical experiments as well, but in a manner that wasn't scientific or psychological. Instead, these human experiments were public demonstrations meant to simulate medical procedures. They blended dark humor with doomsday themes, sparking conversation about how humanity is the biggest plague on the planet. One staged experiment was called Snuff It, which used voluntary offing yourself as a way to control human population. These demonstrations included fake clinical settings and actors and patients that made people uncomfortable with offing themselves, while also making them question what's socially acceptable. It's like the church was walking a fine line between performance art and unethical demonstrations. The reactions were mixed because some people saw the church as a way to open the public's eyes, while others thought these demonstrations and slogans were downright offensive and taboo. Heaven's Gate If you put together a bunch of people who believe in aliens but also believe in Christianity, you get the Heaven's Gate cult. Its leaders, Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles, believe their bodies were set to ascend to a higher level of existence to join an alien spaceship following closely behind the Halle Bob Comet. In preparation for their ascension, the leaders of this cult forced their members to follow a strict lifestyle. The members were told to wear the same clothes and hairstyle, throwing individuality out of the window. Think of yourself having to wear the same clothes as everyone else and basically looking like any other member of the cult, like the minions working under Gru. It worsens because the members are forced to purify their bodies by following strict diets and fasting routines that the leaders believed would help them transcend their earthly forms. But the worst of the worst came when the males were forced to have their balls cut off through castration because the leaders believed that sex was a distraction from transcendence. These experiments were all precursors to the mass suicide that happened during the 90s when 39 members off themselves in the hopes that their souls would be transported to a spaceship where they would travel the cosmos for all eternity with odd haircuts, skinny frames, and no testicles. Rajneeshpuram Let's say that you met a charismatic guru named Osho, who became the leader of a group called Rajneeshpuram. You started calling yourself one of the sannyasins, as Osho convinced everyone in the group to join him in an experiment that was supposed to awaken your spirituality. Osho even built a whole city with homes and shopping malls for you and your friends to hang out in. The goal was to build a utopia of spirituality in the middle of Oregon. It sounds nice, but Osho makes everyone in the group join in on an experiment called dynamic meditation. Dynamic meditation is what you get when a gym session and a trance party are combined. You're supposed to go through intense physical movements before you're all supposed to go dead silent to force your mind and body into diving into your true inner self. 
But these dynamic meditations were meant to force the group members to become more loyal to Osho, who made them believe he was the source of their spiritual salvation. He convinced the group to commit acts of bioterrorism in the locality to incapacitate the voting population so that their own candidates would win the 1984 local elections. Om Shinriko Shoko Asahara was a cult leader with a weird fascination with chemical experiments and warfare. He led a doomsday cult called Om Shinriko, which believed that the planet was soon going to meet its end in a huge war. Asahara believed that it was part of his job to jumpstart this massive battle between countries. This cult was widely known for the infamous sarin gas attack on a Tokyo subway in 1995. It was just a regular Monday morning as the attack killed 13 people and affected over 1,000 commuters during rush hour in Japan. But the scary part was that this wasn't an isolated incident that came into Asahara's mind in a eureka moment. He and his people were already experimenting on toxic substances because they were obsessed with chemical weapons believing that the next war was going to focus on biological weaponry. In that regard, the cult built a well-organized chemical weapon production facility to produce different types of toxic substances that they tested on their own members. Asahara was so focused on starting this war that he didn't even care about the people loyal to him, opting to use them as guinea pigs for his chemical weapons. But his terrorist attacks eventually led to his arrest and execution, ending his delusions of a chemical war. Symbionese Liberation Army While not necessarily a cult, the Symbionese Liberation Army was a cult-like group that made headlines when they kidnapped a rich girl named Patty Hearst. But the shady stuff didn't stop there, because their leader, Donald DeFries, also known as Chinque, started conducting psychological experiments on his members, including Patty. Chinque subjected Hearst to harsh treatment, breaking her down until it became easy for him to manipulate her. He and his other members eventually convinced her to join the SLA. Chinque also recruited other members to his group, using harsh methods and psychological manipulation to convince them of their cause. He wanted an army that was loyal enough to commit murder and assassinations for him. Patty, of course, became one of the biggest cases of Stockholm Syndrome, which is when a kidnapped person either falls in love or develops a psychological bond with their captors. Chinque broke Patty down so hard that she eventually thought, hey, maybe SLA isn't so bad after all, even though he took me from my home and brainwashed me in his group. To that end, she started participating in the group's criminal activities, including bank robberies, even though she could have just asked her rich daddy for some cash. But her transformation from a hostage to an active participant was proof of Chinque's powerful psychological experiments on his members. Scientology we are not trying to get on Tom Cruise's bad side here. Still, Scientology is one of the most controversial religious movements in the world, often getting flagged as a cult, even though it's had its fair share of celebrity followers. The controversial aspect of this cult can be found in an experiment called auditing. Put yourself in a situation where you're undergoing therapy combined with intense interrogation from a Scientologist. You'll hold on to metal cans connected to a device that measures your spiritual energy as you answer personal questions. You had to answer these questions honestly because, according to the group, it is the only way to achieve true spiritual freedom. But the auditing is far from harmless. Instead, some allegations claim that it can be psychologically manipulative and abusive, forcing participants to reveal personal and traumatic details of their lives. You'll be asked the same questions repeatedly for hours, until the one auditing you sees you breaking down or confessing to some of the things you did in the past. These sessions are also recorded, making them available for the leaders to use against their members, often to blackmail them. It's basically a truth or dare game, without the dare, because you'll have to blurt out the truth in an emotional experiment designed to break you down and brainwash you into conforming to the cult's beliefs and practices. Restoration of the Ten Commandments Movement the leaders of the movement for the restoration of the Ten Commandments, a mouthful of a name to say, were essentially scammers who experimented on their believers' vulnerabilities through a series of doomsday prophecies and many different harsh practices. They claimed to have received visions from the Virgin Mary, telling them that the world was about to end. These leaders used these visions to force their members into submitting to their demands, subjecting them to a series of experiments that starved and isolated the members. They went days without eating anything while adhering to a strict schedule of prayer that lasted hours. 
It's already hard enough to go hours without food, but imagine yourself going for days without minimal nourishment as your mind is preoccupied with an impending doomsday event. These harsh experiments made it easier for the movement's leaders to manipulate their followers through the promise of salvation, claiming that these extreme sacrifices would allow them to enter heaven after the end of the world. But when the leaders' doomsday lies steadily unraveled, they took everyone with them. In March 2000, over 500 members of this cult were killed in a fire started by the leaders as their predictions failed to materialize. It was their way of cleaning up the evidence in the hopes that the members wouldn't go after them for their harsh treatment. Meanwhile, if you're feeling lost in life, we can give you that sense of belonging if you join our Discord. Don't worry because we are not a cult that's into terrifying human experiments, at least not yet. Nexium. Let's say you're a young woman who wants to better yourself by joining a self-improvement program involving other like-minded women. However, it turned out to be a huge pyramid scheme designed to trap you in a cult-like environment ruled by a man named Keith Rainier, the leader of Nexium. Unlike most cults, Nexium wasn't there for religious purposes. It hid under the guise of a self-help group run by women who only wanted to help their fellow ladies. But it trapped women into a series of experiments designed to twist the minds of these ladies as they continued to recruit more women into the fold. Rainier manipulated these women into following a strict diet that deprived them of a lot of the world's best meals, as they were basically living on air and water. The reason was that Rainier wanted his women to be slender and sexy, because he was regularly sexually abusing them after making them believe that his semen had healing powers. The experiment also worked like a Ponzi scheme, wherein he manipulated women into recruiting younger and fresher new members so that he would have newer women to abuse. Of course, the older members complied, because that would mean Rainier would be more busy with the new members. Luckily for these women, Keith Rainier got caught when some of the members realized that enough was enough. But instead of repenting, he essentially said, I'll do it all over again, making it clear that he showed no remorse for his actions. Oneida Community Deep in the forests of New York in the 1800s was a community that existed well before our more modern cults. These people thought outside of the box, engaging in a huge societal experiment that was aimed at creating a master race decades before the Nazis had the same idea. To that end, one of the things that they decided was to get rid of the idea of one-on-one -on -one marriage, essentially telling each other, hey, let's all just have sex with each other. The terrifying part was that they thought they could create a superior human through a breeding program designed to pair the best and strongest members of the community with one another. So while it may have been true that they were all married to one another, it was also true that the community picked who you could breed with in the hopes of creating the next generation of superhumans with superior genetics. From a group of only 87 members, the Oneida community grew to more than 300 in a span of 30 years of experimental selective breeding. By 1881, the group disbanded and converted itself into a company. It is now known as a large silverware company called Oneida Limited. So while they failed to breed true superhumans, the community succeeded in producing people with a knack for good silverware. And that's still probably a win for them. The Process Church of the Final Judgment no one took the idea of combining good with bad to an extreme level better than the Process Church of the Final Judgment. At first glance, it looks like a pretty okay cult because it believed in the union of opposites, like embracing both the light and dark sides of existence. Of course, they also believed that God and Satan should be embraced equally. Then again, the cult highlighted evil more than the light side, especially when it came to its recruits. If you wanted to join the Process Church of the Final Judgment, it's like a college frat initiation all over again, but taken to a higher level. Joining the cult meant undergoing tough experiments that were meant to prove your worthiness. You'd have to go on days without sleep and food while forcing you to endure harsh treatment. The cult believed that going through this experiment would get you one step closer to enlightenment because pain was divine. But if you wanted enlightenment through pain, you could have just stayed at home stepping on Legos all day. But this cult simply believed that darkness was also a way to purify, forcing its members to confess their deepest fears and most terrifying secrets. Unfortunately for the cult, the leaders embraced the dark side a bit too much, as they had a lot of disagreements that eventually led to the Process Church's disbandment. Order of the Nine Angles Joining a cult could be a good way for you to learn new life skills, especially if you're looking for a new gig in life. 
the order of the nine angles may be the right cult for you if you want to be a jack of all trades. After all, they have an experimental program called Insight Roles, which allows you to take on roles as military soldiers, community helpers, and even criminals. Of course, the goal is to turn you into a well-rounded human with new perspectives and insights into different societal roles. But you might have to brace yourself for the violence and manipulation that comes with being a member of ONA, especially because of the experiments you'll be a part of. These experiments, however, are not your usual laboratory stuff. Instead, you'll be placed in an internship-like scenario where the cult will force you to infiltrate groups and communities to disrupt them from the inside and study the reactions and consequences of your actions. What's more unethical than becoming a public school teacher to undermine society by teaching radical stuff to children? Well, that's just one of the strategies the ONA used to bring down society. But hey, at least you'll come out learning a lot of stuff while trying to destabilize the community.